My name is Greg Pruitt. I'm the author of Extreme Prayer. And right now we're going to be talking about chapter five, um, that God answers unified group prayer. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus says, again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. So the word agree here, uh, you know, that, that word in, in the original Greek uh, is the word from which we get the idea of symphony. Uh, and it's used in another part of the New Testament, or the same root is used to, to mean beautiful music at a party. And uh, Jesus is saying here that when God's people gather together and they come together to agree to ask for anything, that's, uh, that's like a beautiful symphony of music for God, that unity, that unified group prayer. It's beautiful to God. And when it says uh, in that text, anything, the word anything there is kind of a little bit of a, you know, an under translation of the word. It, it It's the word we get pragmatic from, and it, it, uh, it means like an undertaking. So when God's people are gathering together, uh, to pray together uh, in unity about an undertaking, an undertaking that's something that's consistent with the name of Jesus. It mentions in the verse, in my name. Uh, that is going to happen because God answers unified group prayer. And he kind of teaches this the opposite as well, you know, the, the, the other side of the coin in Mark eleven twenty five 25, when he says, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So the opposite is also true. You know, when we're gathering in unity, that's like beautiful music. But when we're full of bitter conflicts, unresolved, unforgiven, uh, problems in the community god god views that like a cacophony you know for him you know he he doesn't answer prayers of those uh in in a setting like that same kind of thing in matthew 5 23 he says therefore if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them, and then come and offer your gift. And so that 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 unity draws the attention of the Father to our prayers. And that lack of unity, when I have something against somebody else, or if they have something against me, that's like an awful noise like static. And so probably that clarifies why sometimes we view God as not really answering our prayers. You know, do you in your church have a lot of unresolved conflicts? Or maybe in your life, is there somebody you haven't forgiven? You need to deal with that and be skilled at resolving those conflicts because God answers unified group prayer. So one day, uh, really early in my ministry, I can remember um, as a as a leader, you know, I can remember that I heard from our missionaries in Papua New Guinea that they had begun to to gather together and pray about building a facility where all of their local colleagues could, could come and work on Bible translation. And they, they first decided they were going to take a time of unified, like listening prayer, where they were all going to listen to God 
they did it individually and they gathered in groups to pray about it and they came to the conclusion this was of the lord and they were so full of faith they signed a contract obligating us to start payments immediately first payment was $77,000 and the construction company was coming in and i that caught me off guard i we had never raised money for anything like this in our fields before and i was kind of new i didn't know how to do that um, but i could tell that god was at work in this thing and so i went over to the the finance department and i said hey uh do we have any money in the account for this? And sixty-four thousand dollars had already been given for that for that uh, uh, construction. I was like, "What? Okay, praise the Lord!" And then you know that wasn't the seventy-seven thousand, but I told all of our leaders, "Hey, everybody, pray over the weekend that God would provide for this, because I think this is important to God." And so um, on Monday morning, we're having our um, Monday morning, our, our everyday prayer meeting, we gather together in our group and we're praying, Lord, please provide for this. You know, this is so important and uh, we've never done anything quite like it before, but Lord, we know you are powerful and you can provide. And while we were praying in that group, I wonder if God wasn't kind of chuckling a little bit about what would happen next, because I walked from that prayer meeting over to look in the mailbox of all, everybody had a little box and in my box was an envelope and I opened it up. This is not the kind of thing that would happen back then for us. A brand new donor that I didn't know the name of with a little handwritten note and a check for $18,000. And I thought, wow, you know, God he answers prayer. And for the purposes of this chapter, God answers unified group prayer. And, you know, maybe maybe we're a little bit better at praying things individually than we are at praying things in groups. But maybe um, to try this, you, you need to have somebody suggest, hey, this is what we're all going to be praying for. We're going to gather on a certain day of the week or every morning, or and we're going to pray for these specific things, and we're going to keep praying them, and you know we're, we're going to pray them in groups because that unity, God is drawn to it, He loves it, and He promised that He would answer unified group prayer.